Okay, here we're looking at lesson 1.1, integers and absolute value. These are the solutions to pages 6 and 7 from your textbook. Um, we're going to go through all the solutions. Uh, you should be here for one of two reasons. Reason one, you finished all the assigned work from your website. Or two, you're having some trouble in some questions and you need some assistance to get through them. Um, this video is not assigned for you to just come in and copy all the solutions. It's expected that you do all the work or majority of the work um, and come here to check answers or to get assistance on a few of the classwork questions. Um, so if you are in either one of those positions, please continue forward. Otherwise, I need you to go back and finish up the full assignment before you start checking solutions. So let's begin. Um, on pages um, 4 through 18 even, you were asked to do just the even, so I crossed out all the odds there for you. So let's take a look. So for number 4, the question is asking, what is the absolute value of 9? And the answer is 9. Number 6, it's asking us, what is the absolute value of negative 10? And the solution is 10. Sorry, handwriting's a little rough on here. Um, number eight, the absolute value of negative 15 is 15. Number 10, the absolute value of negative seven is seven. I don't know what that was, let's fix it up. Equals, okay, number 12, the absolute value of five is five. Uh, number 14, the absolute value of 0 is 0. Number 16, the absolute value of negative 24 is 24. Number 18, the absolute value of 60 is 60. Okay. Um, at this point, if you have any questions on any one of these, um, you should write them down um, on your assignment, either up in the um, top margin, side margin, just somewhere in your paper, even take a highlighter and highlight some of the questions you have trouble with. And these are the things you should be coming to me and talking to me about. Okay, so just kind of stuffing your paper back in your notebook. Um, that's not going to help you or me. So let's go to the next section here. We have numbers 20 to 26 even, so I did cross out the odds again. Um, now we're going to compare so I'm going to do all the work on the side here. So we have 5 being compared to the absolute value of 5. So what you need to do first is make sure we take the absolute value of 5 first, because this is a question. Just like they were here on the previous page, all of these are questions. Every one of these with the bar around them, the absolute value bars are asking, hey, how far from 0 are you? So this is saying compare 2 to how far is negative 5 to 0. So what you need to do first is find the absolute value. So here I have 2, and over here, what is the absolute value of negative 5? And the solution is 5. So now this is what we compare. So who's bigger, a 2 or a 5? And I hope you're saying the 5 is bigger. So the way we read this is less than 2 is less than 5. Okay, um, I'm going to erase number 20, so if you need this up any longer, please pause. Okay, uh, number 22. I have negative 5 being compared to the absolute value of negative 9. Okay, once again, I have an integer, negative 5, no bars around it being compared to, hey, what's the absolute value of negative 9? How far am I to 0? So I am 9 units away. So who is greater, a negative number or a positive number? So in this scenario, is it better to owe $5 or is it better to have $9? So anytime you have a negative compared to a positive, the positive will always be greater. Always. Okay, so there's number 20. If you need this, please pause because I am moving on to 24. Okay, 
Okay, here I have the absolute value of negative 1 be compared to the absolute value of negative 8. So for both of these, we have to take their absolute values. So this is asking how far am I to 0? 1 unit. How far am I to 0? 8 units. So we're going to use this to compare. Um, who is larger, a 1 or an 8? And hopefully you are saying less than. So 1 is less than 8. Okay. Uh, so that was what, 24? And here is number 26. So 26, you're going to see a lot of these. These are... Um, Really great questions to help you prepare for your standardized test. I know it's the very beginning of the year, uh, but from day one, we're going to compa compare, prepare, and do a lot of writing uh, throughout the school year. And these kinds of questions are going to be asked all the time. There's two things I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for you to describe the mistakes. So it's not OK to say, oh, the answer needs to be this. Um, I also need you to be able to describe what the mistake was in the problem, and to correct it. So I should see two sections in your notebook. Um, the first section, I usually encourage my students to do the correct part first. It's easier to correct the problem, so then you can go back and say, oh, this person over here made this mistake. So the question is never going to be wrong. The question is absolute value of 10. So I should never hear any of you say, well, they wrote the wrong question down because that doesn't make any sense. So if I take a look at the absolute value of 10, you need to ask yourself, well, how many units does it take 10 to um, use up to get to 0? And the solution is 10. So what you will do now is take a look at, uh, let's get a color here. We're going to take a look at your solution 10 and their solution of negative 10. So what do you think we're going to write in the describe part? And if you have something different here and you think your description is also accurate, just come check in with me and we'll work on it. So what's the error? Um, what the student did, and I'm just going to say it to you instead of writing it out, the student took the opposite of 10, which they got negative 10. Um, but absolute value is not opposite. So absolute value measures how far is this number to zero. So in your description, you're going to write the student took the opposite of 10 instead of taking the absolute value of 10. All right, when you're done with this, let's move on to the next slide. All right, here's a little break for a few seconds. Uh, what do you call a thieving alligator? Any guesses? And the solution is a crocodile. I know, a little corny, but still funny. So for this section here, I'm going to do each of these problems separately. Um, once again, this is probably where a lot of the questions are going to come up. Um, if you have any questions after we go through the explanation together, once again, highlight that question. Um, make some notes somewhere on your work um, because these are the type of questions um, throughout the year I'd like you to refine and work on uh, so we can make the skills stronger. I know students see word problems and they run, but I promise you, majority of the time they look more scary than they really are. So all I ask is that you just read through them and give it your best effort. So for number 28, uh, you deposit $50. Students don't really have a good handle on this word, deposit. Deposit means you take your $50 that you got for your birthday, Christmas, graduation, whatever, um, and you bring it to the bank. And when you get to the bank, you have an account with your name on it. And what you do is you save it, and the bank holds onto it for you. So anytime you need any money, you can go to the bank and take it out. That's called a withdrawal. So a deposit is taking your money and saving it. So instead of sticking it in a jar or in an envelope in your drawer, um, you're just saving it in a safe institution um, at a bank. And um, so a deposit's a good thing. A deposit is a positive thing. 
uh, one week later, you withdraw $20. $20 withdrawal means you go to the bank and say, hey, I'm going to the movies with my friends. I need some money. Um, withdraw means you are going to take from the $50. You're going to subtract from the 50. So your directions are write each amount as an integer. So the deposit of $50 is positive. So that's just 50. You don't need to write plus 50. Um, and then the withdrawal of $20, well, that's a negative because you're taking out. So that's negative 20. Okay. Um, I'm going to erase 28. And here is 29. An elevator, well, you're in an elevator. You go down eight floors in an elevator. Your friend goes up five floors in an elevator. Write each amount as an integer. So if you're in an elevator and you're going down, um, that's a negative. So you're at negative eight. Your friend goes up five floors. So your friend's going in a positive direction. So that's just five, positive five. Okay. Now, for the next few problems, 30 to 33, um, I'm going to try to do a couple of them on the number line. 32 and 33, the numbers get kind of large. So those will be pretty huge number lines. So I'm going to do a number line for 30 and 31. Um, 32 and 33, we'll just do off of a chart. So here's number 30. Now remember, anything that has absolute value bars around it, you first have to take its absolute. So let's see. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. What do we go up to? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. Let's make this bigger. Oops. All right. No problem. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Those negatives should not be there. It's a bad habit. Okay. So the first integer we have up here, number 30, is 8. So over the number 8, I'm going to put a dot, and I'm um, just going to put a little slash through 8. The next number is absolute value of 3. So I ask you, what is the absolute value of 3? And hopefully you've said or thinking 3. So I'm going to put a dot above 3. And what I'm going to do over the 3 is I'm going to put the original number which is absolute value of three. So when I order these numbers, I want to use these original numbers that are written here on 30. So I'm going to slash out absolute value of three. The next number is simply negative five. If you look at the commas carefully, this bar goes to the three, and then this bar goes to the negative two. So some students think there's an absolute value bar around this one, but if you follow the commas, there's no bars, so that's simply negative 5. So over negative 5, we're going to put a dot and cross that out. Then we have absolute value of negative 2. Well, oh, the absolute value of negative 2, what is it? And hopefully you are saying 2. So we're going to put a dot over 2 and write the original number right over it. Cross it out. And finally, we have negative 2 which is right here. So if you take a minute and look back, your solutions, the dots, represent from smallest to largest. So if I'm on a number line, if you look at the positives for a second, if I go to the right, the numbers get larger. So the same thing, if I'm down here in the negatives, the more to the right I go, the larger I'm getting. So negative 4 is bigger than negative 5 because we're getting closer to 0. So with negatives, the closer to 0 you get, the bigger you're worth. Okay, so anytime I'm moving towards the right, I'm getting bigger. So and if you look at it the opposite way now, if I'm at 8 and I start going left, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller 
and smaller yet, and even smaller, and even smaller. And the more I go down, the smaller and smaller the numbers to the left are getting. Okay, um, so let's cross out this few. So my solution for number 30 in order least to greatest is negative 5 semicolon. I like using semicolons a little better than commas, but that's all preference. It's up to you. Negative 2. Then I have absolute value of negative 2. The next dot is 3. So I'm just following the dots. Negative 5, negative 2, absolute value of 2, a negative 2, absolute value of 3. And finally, I have 8. Okay, so there is your solution for number 30. I know they take time. Seventh graders hate taking so much time for a question, but um, this truly is one of the best ways to make sure that your numbers aren't being written in the wrong order. Okay, say goodbye to 30. Okay, 31. Uh, let's draw another number line. Okay, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now you notice I just look at um, the numbers and figure out what's the smallest negative and what's the largest positive. And I go from that smallest to that largest. I don't need to make my number line any bigger than I really need to. Okay, so same questions are going on here. What is the absolute value of negative 6? And hopefully you're saying 6. Write the original number over it. Um, then I have negative 7. So just put a dot over negative 7. Next I have 8. Put a dot over 8. Then I have absolute value of 5. The absolute value of 5 is, hopefully you're saying 5, so I put a dot here. Absolute value of 5. And finally, negative 6 is found down here. So if you look at just the number line, these blue dots are now in order from smallest all the way to largest. Okay, so your solution, you're just going to write the numbers down from left to right. So the first number is negative 7. Check. The second number in order from least to greatest is negative 6. Then I move down the number line, and the next number is absolute value of 5. Okay, check. Next to that is absolute value of negative 6. Check. And finally, the last number on this list is 8. So the biggest thing that happens in these kind of questions is students will look at simply the negative in here. And they're like, isn't negative 6 supposed to be down here? But it's not just negative 6. It's the absolute value of negative 6, which asks you how far is this number to 0. Okay. Um, so let's say goodbye to 31. Now let's go to 32. We're going to do 32 and 33 as a chart. Um, I like to use what's called a T-chart. Um, so I'm just going to write the original numbers going down in a chart like this. Okay, you can copy if you need to. All right, what I'm going to do now is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What I'm going to do now is take anything that needs absolute value. So this first number is simply negative 12. The second number is the absolute value of negative 26, which is 26. The third number is simply negative 15. The fourth number is the absolute value of negative 12, which is 12. And the last number is the absolute value of 10, which is 10. So at this point, we're going to take a look at the red numbers to help us order the blue numbers from smallest to largest. So what I'm going to do is, we know that the negatives are the smaller numbers, right? So if you look at a number line, which number between these two purple dots is furthest away from 0, the 12 or the 15? 
and hopefully you're saying a 15. So this guy is my smallest number here. So negative 15. And then obviously the second number is the other negative number, which is negative 12. So I'm always going to order the blue numbers because those are the originals. I'm going to use the red to help me order. I'll use the blue to put them back in least to greatest. So now I have positives. So from 0, who is the number that comes next from 0? Is it 26, 12, or 10? Remember, these are now positive numbers. So from 0, when I move up my number line, the next number that comes up would be 10. And its original number given to us is an absolute value. So that's the number that I use. From 10, who comes next? 26 or 12? And hopefully you're saying 12. And the original number given was the absolute value of negative 12. And finally, there's only one number left, which is 26. And its original form was in the absolute value of negative 26. So here is your solution. Some students like these graphs, some don't. Um, if you wanted to draw it out in a number line, go right ahead and do so. All right, and finally, number 33. Well, not finally, but the last ordering question. We're going to make um, another T-chart. So we have absolute value of negative 34. We have 21. We have negative 17. We have absolute value of 20. You try to make these bars a little longer so they don't look like numbers. Um, and the absolute value of negative 11. So just like before, we're going to go through and any number that has absolute value bars will take their absolutes. So for absolute value of negative 34, hopefully you said 34, this stays 21, this stays negative 17. There's no bars around them. The absolute value of 20 is 20. The absolute value of negative 11 is 11. So what we're going to do now is take a look at any number in the red that has a negative, because negatives are smaller. So I only see one. So this is going to make our life so much easier. This guy comes first, so negative 17 is my smallest number. Cross it out. Now take a look at your reds. Remember, on a number line, once we finish with the negatives, we go towards zero. And then we go to our positives. So from zero, who comes next? 34, 21, 20, or 11. Okay, hopefully you are saying 11, and its original number was the absolute value of negative 11. So let's cross that out. So once again, going from 11, who comes next? 34, 21, or 20? So from 11, the next number that would come up on a number line in order would be 20. And its original number is the absolute value of 20. Okay, we can cross that out. So on a number line from 20, who comes next, 34 or 21? Hopefully you're saying 21, and the original there is also 21. Cross that out. And finally, we have the absolute value of negative 34. Okay, so there is number 33. I promise you the last three are much easier than those. Um, ordering is not super difficult. It just takes time. Uh, seventh graders are generally very impatient. So if you look at the directions for the last three, it says simplify the expression. Right? An expression is pretty much um, some of the expressions will have solutions. And later on when we get to chapter three, when we get to uh, expressions and equations, um, some of those will not have a solution. So expressions or simplify means make the answer as small as you possibly can. So for number 34, you're like, well, what's so difficult about that? We've done this 100 times. Awesome. So the absolute value of negative 30 is simply 30. You notice the negative is inside the absolute value bar? Awesome. Now take a look at 35. 
where is the negative? So what you're going to do is pretend this negative is not here for a second. What's the absolute value of 4? And I hope you're saying 4. Now you see how this negative is on the outside? What you're going to do is simply attach it. The proper way to read it is what is the opposite of the absolute value of 4. So you're going to take the absolute value, 4, and make it opposite. So the opposite of 4 would be negative 4. The only reason we're doing opposite is because this negative is on the outside. Just an easier way to remember is take the absolute value first and bring the negative down. 36 is the same thing. Pretend this negative is not here. What's the absolute value of negative 15? And you're like, simple, 15. Now you see how there's a negative outside? Just bring it down and it comes along for the red. All right, we are finally approaching the end here. Um, I know you finished all your textbook work. Oh, sorry. Three more uh, word problems here. I'm getting ahead of myself. So number 37, I'm going to do each one off to the side one at a time. Uh, use a number line, graph and label the following points on a number line. So A is negative 3, E is 2, and it's negative 6, and T equals 0. What do the words spell? So what do we have? Negative 6 to 0. So negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Let me move this number line down just a tiny bit. Here. Okay, so we have A is negative 3. A. E is 2. Okay, you can do that. 1, 2. E is 2, M is negative 6, and T is 0. What word do the letters spell? So for part A, it spells the word mate, M-A-T-E. Okay. Now for part B, so that's all you had to do for A is draw this number line out and label over each of the given integers. Notice there's no absolute value on any of these. Okay, for part B, graph and label the absolute value of each point in part A. So it's telling you to take the uh, numbers in part A and find their absolute values. What is that? So I'm going to do that first. A equals the absolute value of negative 3. E is equal to the absolute value of 2. M is equal to the absolute value of negative 6. And T equals the absolute value of 0. Okay, so let's find absolute value of each of these. What's the absolute value of negative 3? Hopefully you're saying 3. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 6, oops, I think I'm too close to the edge here, and the absolute value of 0 is 0. So now we're going to take those four numbers in red and order them from least to greatest on a number line. So it looks like we're going from 0 to 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So here is A at 3. E is at 2, M is at 6, and T is at 0. And the question is, what word do those letters spell now? And it spells the word team, T-E-A-M. Okay, not too terrible. Uh, it just takes a little focus. Okay, next, 30. Uh, sorry, 41. Uh, for 41, we have to use the diagram that we see here to the left. Um, so let's take a look. The depths of two scuba divers exploring a living coral reef are shown. 
So for part A, write an integer for the position of each diver relative to sea level. Okay, sea level is zero. Sea level is the point where you're on the sand um, and your feet can kind of touch the water. So you're not necessarily in the water, but you're about to get in. Um, and once you start walking into the ocean, you start going in the negative direction because you're going downward. Um, if you were climbing stairs, you were going upward, so that would be positive. <clears throat> or if you were flying uh, in an airplane or a hot air balloon or anything that would take you up would be positive. But since you're going down, you're going lower than sea level, these are going to be negatives. So for 41A, the scuba divers are at negative 14 feet, and the other guy is at negative 18 feet. So this is an interesting question. Um, for part B, it's saying which integer in part A is greater? Okay, they're not asking us who's at a deeper part of the ocean. They're asking us um, which integer, if I'm taking a look at negative 14 and negative 18, is greater. So if you think about this for a minute, who's the greater integer, closer to zero or farther from zero? So when we compare negatives, the closer to zero you are, the bigger you are. So our solution for B is negative 14 feet. Part C, which integer in part A has a greater absolute value? So we're going to take a look at A and take the absolute value of both of these. So the absolute value of negative 14 is 14. The absolute value of negative 18 is 18. Compare this absolute value with the depths of that diver. So this has got a bigger absolute value. So compare this absolute with the depth of that diver. Um, that means this diver is doing what? This diver is actually deeper into the ocean than this guy. Okay. Again, I know I've said this a few times, but if you have any questions, um, please write them down and we can go over them together. 42, the summit elevation of, vol of a volcano is the elevation of the top of the volcano relative to sea level. So what that means is they take the very top of the volcano and measure the distance from the top of the volcano to the point where the water meets the sand. Okay, so sea level on a number line would be zero. The summit elevation of the volcano, oh, I knew how to say this yesterday, Kilauea in Hawaii is 1,277 meters. The summit elevation of the underwater volcano Lohai in the Pacific Ocean is negative 969 meters. So this negative means we're still underwater. Which summit is closer to sea level? So the interesting words to this question are right here. Which summit is closer to sea level? Um, this is asking for distance. They're saying who is closer to uh, the point where the water meets the sand. Who is closer to zero is really what it's asking you. So there, it's actually a, a disguised absolute value question. So if you take a look at Kilauea, it is at 1,277 meters away from uh, sea level. So its absolute value, well, that doesn't change. If we take a look at Lohai, uh, we're going to take its absolute value, um, and that's 969. Stop it. So which summit is closer to sea level? So okay. and the solution would be Kilauea is closer. Sorry, not Kilauea. Lohai is closer to sea level. Okay. Um, and finally, what we're going to do is a little... Okay, for this last section, uh, this is what I call my reflection section. Um, 
And it's really good to take this time out before you start, you know, trucking forward and working on other skills. Um, take a few minutes and answer the following questions. Um, on the next page, you'll find the solutions. Um, make sure you answer all of these questions before you move on. Um, so it would be a good time to pause uh, once I'm done explaining and answer these three questions. Um, and then you can hit the play button and go through the solution. So question one, what are integers? Question two, what is absolute value? And question three, tell me what it is you're struggling with um, and what we need to refine a little more uh, to help you become stronger in any of these skills. So please pause here and when you're ready, move to the next page. So question one, what are integers? Integers are all the whole numbers and their opposites. All right, pause here if you need. I'll be moving on to the next page. Question two, what is absolute value? Absolute value measures the distance between a number or and zero. Or you could also say absolute value measures how far a number is to zero. You don't have to have both of these written. Just pick one. Um, I kind of prefer the first one. Because students always remember the magic word distance, but either one's okay. And finally, number three, uh, what are you struggling with? <clears throat> like I said earlier, um, if there are things you're struggling with, um, it's good to know what those skills are. It's good to be aware of them uh, so we can work on refining them um, at any point in time that you have some downtime. Um, all right, great work today. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.